Welcome back, everyone, to another segment of The MCR. Mac and me, my name's TJ. In this segment, talk about something that came to my attention last week involving the Electoral College. As you know, Trump won this last election. I think he had 312 Electoral College votes. I think it was 312. About that, yeah. And uh, I forget offhand how what she had. She was a 226 or something in the low 200s. Right. Right. Uh, in any event, you know, there's always been a big deal about California and New York and and uh, how they how how they just have a a sizable electoral count total. As of this election, uh, California had 54 and New York. Uh, gee, I forget offhand. I, I was looking at the Electoral College map just this morning and I, I forget how many uh, California had given 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 this last census and these figures will go into effect in 2030 but uh, after this last census democrat controlled states are losing 11 or correction 12 they are losing 12 electoral college votes and it, it, you might as well say they're, they're, and I'm sure they'll be redistricting, but they're losing 12 uh, House seats. And, and this just isn't California. It's uh, California is losing four. New York is losing three. Illinois is losing two. Oregon, Minnesota, and Rhode Island are all losing one. And all these states went for Harris in the last election. Now, there's one more state, Pennsylvania, which went for Trump. Pennsylvania is also losing one electoral college vote. The uh, the swing swing to that is uh, opposite to that is as far as Republican controlled states, Texas is picking up four. Florida is picking up three. Idaho, Utah. And Tennessee, which our old time listeners know I call the land of orange. Idaho, Utah, and Tennessee are all picking up one. All of these states were pretty solidly red. And then a couple of swing states, which also happened to go red this past election, Arizona, North Carolina, they also are picking up one. So it's it's not it's not a true they lose 12, we gain 12, but uh, well, they are losing 12, <laughs> you know? Right, yeah, the, the, because the swing states change. Yeah. and, I mean, and It wasn't, is, wasn't very long ago, Florida was a swing state. And yep. in our lifetime, Texas was a swing state. Yep. Now both of those are solid, and California was a red state. I mean, it, it changes. Uh, the, and the, re- the result for, of this is, the uh, shift in demographics, you know, population right. shift, you know, uh, California. I, I was stationed in California for 10 and a half months and I loved it. You know, I didn't want to leave California, but we're going back to 1986, you know. Yeah, and that yeah, that was. Yeah, there's no way I'd want to go to California and live right now. You know, no. even, even the cool part of the state, you've got to deal with the political nonsense. I, I was I was stationed in the state of Washington at Fort Lewis, and I, I, I you know I just loved being on the West Coast. I'll say, and and in Washington, uh, for all their wilderness activities, they're pretty screwed up politically. You know, right. I mean it just it just sucks. You well, know, I, I'm not sure you're aware, but uh, I think in this last election, 11 counties and four more counties might join them have voted to secede from Oregon. And they want to join Idaho. Yeah, now, it's that, called the that, Greater Idaho Movement. Yeah, it now that what that requires is the, and I don't. This is where it'll get hung up. I believe the Oregon Legislature uh, has to approve it. The Idaho Legislature has to re- approve it, and then the U.S. House also has to approve it for that to actually happen. The so odds of all I, that happening is kind I, of slim. I think, well, I don't see Oregon giving up, uh, you know, a House seat perhaps or electoral votes to idaho and and let's talk let's let's be honest it's all about tax money too yeah um 
this uh, loss of 12 uh, votes, seats, however you want to define it, that's that's you're approaching the size of a mid-sized state. And mm. and it, for instance, it mentioned, I guess the state of Washington has elector, uh, 12 electoral votes, I, if, if I read it correctly. I, I'll tell you what I did see was Tennessee, which is gaining one, was already at 11. So the one vote that Tennessee gains makes it 12. So you could safely say that's another Tennessee state, you know. Right. Yeah, and, um, you know, our, our great state of Michigan is at, uh, is at 15. So it makes it makes that comparable. And I think we've dropped, I, I want to say, two or three in the oh, since well, last, last couple of census reports. I, I, I know at one point, at least I want to say, and anybody can correct me if I'm not right. Mr. Hawley can correct me. He's a historian on our channel or for our channel. And but I believe we were at 19 at one point. Yeah. Uh but uh, and, and, you know, I, I in 10 years when I'm no longer gainfully employed, I have dreams of living in Tennessee. So I don't know. In 10 well, years, I have dreams of living anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, for sure. But, uh, you know, and, and this whole electoral college thing, I feel like it brings us for, full circle back to the whole immigration issue. Because, you know, the Democrats want these illegals in here and then they want them counted. And then if they get counted, well, there goes well, the census report. You know, it, it goes back to the black person is three fifths of a person. And how that came about was uh, Democrat states in the South wanted to count their slaves as full persons and and therefore gain house seats and electoral votes and so on and so forth when these people had no right to vote or uh -huh. even be free for that matter but they wanted to count them as full persons this is the same tactic it's yeah exactly, really you know it's you know what why do you think that michigan's west coast and, and we know here the winters there are brutal oh, brutal yeah. yet if you go to benton harbor or holland or a lot of these places full of people from Mexico. Why in the hell would anyone from Mexico decide to settle on the west coast of Michigan? Yeah. They, they, did, they didn't decide it. They were put there. And that was to swing Michigan into a permanent blue state. So, and they want to do the same thing with Texas. Because then, you know what? Then the Electoral College doesn't matter if you win it well, or not, because you'll always win it. Ilhan Omar the one of the squad out of control democrats uh she it's that's because of the whole uh somali uh relocation to that state you yeah. know was that i uh, mean why would somalis want of all places in the united states want to live in in minnesota yeah it makes no sense but uh anyway uh come 2030 is is when uh when this we'll call the uh, electoral college adjustment is to take take place. So in 2028, uh, when we have our next presidential election, it'll still still be you know the the current uh, current uh, uh, assigned uh, electoral college votes. Uh, hopefully, hopefully whether it be J.D. Vance or Ron DeSantis, you know, because those I would say those are the front runners for 2028. Hopefully one of those two guys or whoever the Republicans pick uh, is able to weather that 2028 just to get us just to get us past that into 2030 and beyond. Also, and and these stats go beyond 2030, too. They're talking by uh, I and I don't have it written down here, but in one of the news articles I was reading about this, they, they're they saying by 2050, if it, if it doesn't get turned around. It's going to be even worse by 2050 for the Democrats with this whole electoral college count. So uh, every, every time you hear that they want to get rid of it, it's because it's a hindrance to their one party, all powerful government. Yeah. Uh, and, and the one news report I read made the comment that, you know, this is much a victory for the Republican governors who's basically putting a shellacking on the Democrat governors. In other words, the Republican governors are making their states so favorable and the Democrat 
uh, governors are making their states such shitholes. All right, uh, that people are like, I'm I'm done with this. I'm out of here. And uh, you know the yeah the blue states might be getting bluer, but they're getting fewer too. The red states are getting redder and larger. So uh, redder is better. Yeah. So that and that's you know if if the Democrats continue on their course, uh, this this could only probably become more entrenched. We'll say, which is which is fine as long as we keep winning, you know. But uh, that that's all I have on this topic. You got any any final thoughts there, Mac? Well, it it also impacts the number of House seats each state has. So yep. when 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 California and New York have less and less and less House seats. Uh, it's going to change, especially in, a, in, in an election where neither candidate reaches 270 and the yeah. House, then the House elects the president. And, and you know, that, 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 that would involve redistricting. And normally, if whatever party's control on that state, redistricting will favor that party. However, in this past election, and I don't know if it was all 50 states, and I think when they finally a month later got through counting all the votes uh, states like i want to say like perhaps hawaii or whatever they too shifted red by 0.2 percent so there appears to even in democrat strongholds there was a very slight shift to the red uh and i'm saying that because with california losing four that doesn't mean they're losing four democrats they'll just redistrict to keep the Democrat control, we'll say. But right. as far as representation in the House and and as far as the Electoral College count, they've just they've like I say, and and when you look at uh, California and New York, that's seven right there. Okay, seven, right. which is half the size of a mid-sized state. So, anyways, hope ho- I'm hoping this trend continues. To be honest. Yeah, me too. So that's all I got for this one. And uh, thanks, everyone, for your support. And we'll catch you in the next segment. As always, be safe. Watch your six. And don't tread on me.